If you're going to fish backcountry lakes, one of the better patterns to uh, go with is a nondescript version uh, created about 50 years ago by Randall Kaufman uh, called the Timberliner Merger. It doesn't particularly imitate anything specific, at least it doesn't exactly imitate anything specific, but it does uh, pass for things like damselflies, caddis, and uh, even some mayflies. What you'll need by way of materials is a 2x long hook, hook, 2x long shanked hook. This happens to be a Daiichi 1710. Uh, TMCO 5262 would work just as well. You'll also need it's a, you'll also need uh, some sort of marabou. The tail was originally moose hair. He later switched that to marabou. I tend to go with the uh, mottled or uh, grizzly marabou, which is actually chicken. You'll need some sort of dubbing. This can be tied in tan or olive or gray. You'll need copper wire. You can weight this or leave it unweighted. I tend to give it a slightly light uh, lightweight underbody favored toward the front so that it'll it will jig a bit as you slowly hand retrieve it. I find that uh, India hand hackle, Indian head hand hackle works just fine. But the secret as far as Kaufman was concerned to the fly or at least to the fly's success was grizzly hackle tips. You'll need two Again, he credits the, much of the success to these grizzly hackle tips, and he liked the wider, uh, broader silhouette of the uh, the hen hackle wings. As I said, the original tail was uh, was made of moose fibers. Kaufman later switched to a marabou tail for the increased motion. I like to take about half the hook shank length and tie it in just above the barb. And that creates a nice fluffy little tail. Which should give you a lot of movement, or does give you a lot of movement in the water. And what you want to do is tie in your wire. This will be a rib. And he calls for copper wire. It creates a nice contrast with this tannish body. Now he would dub the body just by simply wrapping the dubbing on the hook. I, as I've said in previous videos, I prefer the dubbing loop. I think it creates a stronger body and it also gives me a uh, fuzzy effect that I like. The dubbing that he used on his versions was Angora Goat mixed with Hairtron. I can't see using such material with all that, those guard hairs and then matting down the guard hairs. If you're going to use, use that then take advantage of it and really fuzz up the body. The fish's teeth will tend to 
get hung up in all those fibers. It will also trap air bubbles. Add a little Dave's flex in that. And once again, as I showed in previous videos, wrap, start the wrap, then go behind the rib for one or two turns. Then come back in front of it. and build a tapered carrot-like body thicker toward the front Now in his, his book, Kaufman says to make sure these ribbing turns are tight. What you're looking for is to create a sense of segmentation. With the fuzzier body, some of that will be hidden. But I like that effect. I like the idea of it hinting through the color of the rib, hinting through as opposed to being kind of in your face. If the guard hair is a little too long for you, go ahead and trim it up just a little bit. Now's the time to do it before you get all the other materials on there. Again, the original recipe called for neck hackle. I understand it. I actually like the effect the neck hackle has. It presents finer legs. But the reality is, if you, you're a little judicious in your selection from the Indian saddle, and you don't wrap too much on here you can get a nice leggy effect just like with the red fox squirrel hair nymph and it gives you plenty of movement Why 
what you want to do is make sure to tie that so that it folds back over the body if you play with it a little bit kind of move it around the hook remember spar sparse is, is good you don't want too much you don't want this to be too thick what you're after is the movement as you're pulling it through the water when you go to tie in your hackle tips what you want is you want them to curve away from each other now, so, a lot of times that's something relatively easy to do given that most feathers have a natural curve to them but sometimes it just doesn't want to happen for you so you got to kind of cheat on it a little bit but either way what you want is you want them cur kind of curving out and away from the body of the fly you're also going to want them to extend about halfway back along on the length of the body and what what's going to happen is when you as you're pulling it through and all all those legs are moving those feathers are going to tend to come together like this and add a pulsating motion build up just a little bit of a head And this is one of the reasons why shorter shank hooks really don't work well, at least as far as I'm concerned, is that you want this uh, somewhat prominent head on there. And what happens with the shorter shanks is that you don't, you generally don't end up leaving yourself enough room to have a good looking head. For me, the secret to this fly is all the motion inherent in these materials. You've got the hackle tips, you've got the uh, Indian hen hackle, you've got the marabou, and by dubbing the uh, fuzzy body, you've got all, all that material trapping air bubbles and moving with the pattern. In some ways, it's similar to uh, the hare's ear wet fly that and you can see my video on that but it's got even more motion it's a little bit more of an exaggerated body and it imitates any number of things and it's one of those killer patterns on backcountry lakes give it a try